So in this activity, we're trying to use the idea of tricolorability to distinguish between diagrams and figure out whether it's conceivable that two diagrams could represent the same knot or whether it's for sure that two diagrams represent different knots. Using our K32, which is a good time as any, this knot is also called the trefoil knot. Um, anyone who grew up in the Midwest and remembers the Girl Scout cookies that are called trefoils, um, they're the same as, what do they call them out here? Shortbread? There's some generic name in the New England area for the, the it's the, the, the ones that are like, you know, just like a butter shortbread, they're delicious. Um, but yeah, they call them trefoil cookies in the Midwest. Um, but yeah, this knot's called a trefoil, tree tre for three crossings, right? It's a symbol knot with three crossings. And so this is our reference point, and we know, based on this tricoloration, that the trefoil knot is tricolorable. So in question four, you were asked to decide whether or not the knot represented by this diagram could conceivably be the trefoil in disguise. What did you figure out about whether this diagram was three colorable? Yeah, so you couldn't find a way to three color this. What you might think about is how could you prove that this diagram cannot be? So just because you did not find a three coloration, how do we know that we cannot in fact find a three coloration. Do you have a way of, uh, of explaining why that might be the case? You're talking us through your thought process for trying to find a three coloration. How close did you get? So one of the observations that you can make about this diagram is it's got four arcs in it instead of three. And so by the pigeonhole principle in mathematics, if we only have three colors and we have to color four arcs, that means at least one pair of arcs has to share a color, right? Um, so let's maybe say, let's say that we know that two arcs have to be red. Um, and let's see if we can come up with a way of coloring the rest of the diagram in a valid way. So let's say I take these two big arcs to be red and I color the other ones to be green and blue. I get some valid crossings, right? I get a valid crossing right here and I get a valid crossing right there. But I necessarily get other crossings that are not valid in this process, right? Um, and so one of the things you could do is try and, and write a proof around that idea. Right. If, if two crossings are both red, or if, sorry, if two arcs are both red and go through the different, the six different possibilities for which pair of arcs could we make red and then show if I make that pair of arcs red, there is no way to color the other two arcs green and blue that leads to a valid coloration. Right? And you could exhaust all possible cases in that way. So this does seem to be the kind of question that's going to be sensitive to how many arcs there are in my diagram. Having four arcs seems to have given us a harder problem than when we were working with just three arcs, right? Because we have exactly three colors to work with. So, okay, so we decide this is not a tricolorable knot diagram. So what does that mean about the knot that this diagram represents? What can we say for sure? It's not the 3-2 knot. It's not the 3-2 knot. It's not the trefoil. If we believe that tricoloration is a knot invariant, then every diagram of the trefoil will have to be three colorable. This one is, but this diagram is not, and therefore this cannot be a diagram of the trefoil. Right? So invariance means every diagram of this knot has to have that property. And so if I can find even a single diagram of some knot that doesn't, that diagram can't represent the same knot that we started with. So whatever knot this is, it's not the trefoil, because the trefoil is tricolorable, and this one isn't. What about number five? What about this funny looking pretzel of a knot? Perhaps double pretzel. Did you find a tricoloration for this? Cool, so here is one valid tricoloration of this knot. And this knot has fully six different arcs and six crossings, right? So maybe there's something about that number six that's more compatible with three than four was. Maybe there's a number theory like divisibility thing lurking in the background here, who knows? Um, but there does seem to be more possibilities afforded by these extra arcs and extra crossings, and this looks like a valid tricoloration. Does anybody see a different way we could tricolor this? Like fundamentally different way of using three colors in this diagram? Is there a simpler tricoloration besides the one that uses all the same color? This part's going to help you with uh, question six, if we can get it now. And this insight will be enough for us to wrap for the day, so you know, we will earn our earn our closing time. So one of the ways of getting a new valid coloration is just to flip flop the green and the red on the left hand side, right? This one's valid, and then so is that one. Um, I, what I would say is it feels almost like what we did is we just kind of 
used an ambient isotope. We sort of turned this part of the knot over, right? Um, so maybe it's maybe it's a distinct coloration. Maybe it's not. Um, what I would say is, is there a so in this in this coloration we have two two arcs that are red, two arcs that are green, two arcs that are blue. Is there a way for us to to vary from that, right? To make a fundamentally different coloration. So instead of having two of each color, that we have an unbalanced number of, of arcs of each color and yet still have a valid coloration. You see a way to do that? And you have to include each color. Let's take this valid coloration and create some invalidity in it a little bit. Maybe let's take this blue arc on the right um, and let me just make it green. I think yeah. I might have it. Yeah. Exactly. So when I create this green arc right here, I create invalidity at this crossing because I have two green arcs but not three. This crossing, same story. This crossing, same story. I can fix that invalidity by making this last arc also green. And now I have a valid coloration because at every crossing I either have all three arcs the same color, bing, 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 or I have all three arcs different colors, bing, 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 on the left hand side. So this too is a valid coloration, but now it has four green arcs. Uh, wait, do I have that right? And then one each of the red and the blue, right? So it's unbalanced. So that feels to be qualitatively distinct from the colorations that we had before. So coloration is nice because it's a yes, no proposition, right? My diagram is colorable in the way that we want or it's not. Um, but we can also, if we're feeling fancy, we can get into the process of counting how many different colorations can we have? Because if coloration is an invariant, so should the number of colorations also be an invariant. And so if you hand me a diagram that has eight different ways, different, fundamentally different ways of tricoloring it, and I have another diagram with 12 fundamentally different ways of tricoloring it, then I know that those are going to be different knots underneath. Um, and so that's something that we can, you know, when we ratchet it up a little bit, uh, we can get into doing that counting of colorations as well.